Welcome to Three Dad Bods, the nexus of entertainment and news. Well, not exactly your first stop, but no doubt you will laugh, you will cry, but you will be entertained. Welcome everybody to another edition of Three Dad Bods with Brent and Carl. Three so, Dad Bods with two. I know <laughs> it's it's a, it's we might have to do something about that someday, but he always ends up turning up like a bad penny. You never know. You know, one day Sean will be on there and he'll be like, and he's not dead. So for you guys that think that we're going to make another crass joke, we're not going to do that this time. Maybe Brett will. Go again. Yeah, please, please, please don't believe that. Please don't believe he's dead. Brent's just a jackass. Next. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yes, I about a month ago, almost to the day, you know. Yeah. Visited everybody back in the old land of sound. You know, it's just catch up with a lot of you out there. Heard a lot of positive things about our podcast. And, you know, through the summer months and actually for the last few months, we've both been extremely busy, but we'll fit one of these in here every now and then and hopefully get everybody caught up to what's going on stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's been busy, you know, just. You know, summer is that way for everybody, right? And so yeah. it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah, we have been a little inconsistent. We apologize. But on the other hand, you'd rather hear something interesting than just boring weekly renditions of what our schedules were like, which kind of get old very quickly. But uh, a lot of stuff's going on in the world right now, Brent. You know, but before we jump into that, though, I, I just want to say, like, you know, I'm, and I talked about it with you when, when we were visiting and you know, Carl and I, we got together. We had some. We had some good CC, much better than no, that's right. Yeah. In Arizona. We played some uh, some golf down in Top Golf down in the the land of the Hat Valley. But I I have to say, just like couldn't I was just so blown away by. I know the area has grown and it's changed, and you know over twenty years, all kinds of things changed. But that whole you know Lehigh area up in there, and I just oh, it's completely unrecognized at all. Just all the buildings that have gone up, small. Well, it's like a small little metro center <laughs> gone up. It used to be just Thanksgiving Point and stuff down there. Now, uh, um, you know, a lot of people, Adobe is over there. And just you know, it's incredible how much everything is grown. It's blown up. Like, yeah, I think I, I thought it was funny. We go to Top Golf and we're we're going in the building, and it's like, isn't this where Geneva Steel was at? I'm like, no, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Geneva Steel is, is a long time ago. I mean. There's kids that are born and all their adults that don't remember Janina Steele. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, you no, know, I've gone back over the last, I don't know, a couple of weeks. I've been listening to our old podcast. And one of those, I talked about a trip that I was on down in Birmingham and uh, mentioned, you know, how abandoned everything is. And, and most of it is just these large steel plants that are just vacant. You know, they're, they're, I mm-hmm. mean, they're humongous. They are enormous. And then seeing what Utah Valley, what from and all of them did to Geneva down there, that's, those are the kinds of things that, you know, Birmingham and yet yeah, needs to kind of take a look at a, a rejuvenation project. Sure. I don't know if there's, you know, health risks with the ground and the chemicals. I, I don't know any of that stuff. I'm no scientist. I just play one on the radio. It's a really good thing that they've done down there. A little kind of uh, entertainment district, I guess you could call it. No, and they have a lot of homes. They have beautiful homes in that area. It's called Vineyard. And they, uh, I mean, these are a million dollar homes uh, just short of the lake. Now, they haven't accounted for the fact if it ever rains like it did in 83, that uh, some of those homes are going to have some issues. But uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic in area. Just the way they designed it. For Utah Valley University, UBU, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. Like, like, good yeah. job of taking an ice. Because it was an ice sore. Let's be honest. Oh, it was ugly. Rusty red smoke <laughs> stack for, you know, about what is it, about a mile long or whatever. Just bacon, doing nothing at all. 
Well, the next step is the lake. They, they've had a lot of issues with pollution there. I used to swim in that thing. So that's, it's kind of funny, but they have a sewer plant by American fork. That's just right off the edge of the lake. And then they have, they have Geneva for years causing pollution. And so they need to get in the lake and dredge it basically. And then they're even talking about putting a community in the middle of the lake on a man-made island. So you could have two big bridges across right over to Saratoga Springs. So it eliminates, I mean, it's tough. You have to go to Lehigh and then over again. And it was last night I was on the main artery coming from Saratoga to, uh, I 15 and it was hell. I mean, just what, so much traffic. So shame queen or pacing or is that where? Yeah. 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 And eventually, yeah, they want a kind of a freeway that goes around that part of the lake and then also up to Salt Lake. So Utah County probably has the ability to, well, I don't think it'll ever get population wise as high as Salt Lake County, but as far as amenities, as far as kind of a cool place to live, Utah County is probably, you know, it's probably one of the better places in Utah now. So yeah, a lot of millionaires live down there. I mean, it's incredible how many tech millionaires have moved to Utah because of the, they call it the, I think they call it the, uh, Wasatch Silicon Slopes or Wasatch Slopes, something, something like that. It's kind of weird. But, but nobody it's, wants to uh, live in California, right? Still, well, hell no. California's coming over, right? Well, Newsom doesn't even want to live in California. Kamala doesn't want to live in California. <laughs> Speaking of Kamala, like, you know, look, could you imagine, like, well, I'm sorry, but could you ever imagine a million years that she could be our president in November? Well, let me, let me ask you some questions. Oh, only answer yeah. yes or no, though. Don't elaborate. Just answer yes or no. Okay. Make are you sick? Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Uh, well, to be honest, right yeah. now, for me personally, better. But I there's a, some factors for that. There's some reasons for that that are unrelated to the current economy. Only yes or no. Only yes or no. Yeah, okay. financially, I'm about off right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But. Tax wise, are you? Oh, hell no. I'm getting worried. Glacery wise, are you? Oh, no. It's it's a lot more expensive. Yes or no? No. Okay. That now, the is, is it correct that the majority of the people that you talk to in your line of work, they are, it's safe to say, upper middle class to upper Extremely. class, correct? In talking with them, do any of those people think that the economy is good? Well, no, there's a lot of people who no, are yes, retired no. that hate it right now. Yeah. Yes or no, 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 there we go. So my question is, and I have yet to talk to anybody who's like, wow, our economy is really booming. Wow. Things are going great. Why, why, why would we continue this? Path. Well, most, mostly it's just the cost of everything. Everything's gone up so much. I know, but why would we vote for somebody who's responsible for that? I don't understand people's thinking on why they would be behind here. And then I begin to think if the whole Joe Biden thing was completely planned out from the beginning, from mm -hmm. the very, very beginning of the election process, and they knew there's no way that he's ever going to win. We're going to put him into a debate that's going to blow up in front of his face and we can put her in. Because let's face it, she is not an intelligent person. She's being controlled by whatever. Oh, she, she does not have the ability to make her own decisions. So it's the most undemocratical way to put a leader into a position. It's a coup. Cool. Well, she still hasn't done a 30 interview. interview. Yeah. Days, no interviews. Yeah. No interviews. She didn't win one delegate in the regular primaries. It was almost like a big waste of time for, it at was. least for the Democrats. And if I'm a Democrat, I would be furious. Oh, absolutely. But they just almost like it's, it's almost like the sheep mentality. Well, they're telling me this is good, great, everything. So it must be great, everything. Well, they did the same thing when Hillary ran against Trump in 2016. The super delegates were guaranteed to Hillary Clinton before the primaries even began. So she already had a 900 vote lead on anybody else. And so it was just a foregone conclusion. She was going to be the candidate. Yeah. The Democratic Party is definitely not 
a democratic process. And they are they are far from being democratic. And that's 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 what my Democrat friends don't realize is you guys are being led around by the nose. You have no say in who your candidate is. Yeah. Or or what your government is and, and will become. And now just recently we've seen Kennedy Jr. endorse Trump, which it was kind of along the wall which way he's gonna go. Do you think him endorsing Trump now shows that Trump really is a, a big favorite and, and the media is just kind of hyping us along us. Oh, well, let's make him man. Because I talked very few people that I talked to are saying that they would vote for Kamala or Camilla or Camel Y. It's like I, yeah. I like to call her. Well, I'll tell you, the Democrats' only strategy, and Bobby talked about it in his speech the other night, and then uh, he was in with Trump the next night in in one of Trump's uh, rallies. And yeah, the only strategy Democrats have right now is vote against Trump. That's it. They don't talk yeah. about the economy. They don't no. talk about foreign relations. Um, they don't well, talk. Just throw these little things out there. Like uh. if you want, we're yeah. going to attack the economy and we're going to go after grocers and impose fines on them. You know, oh, that's, that's insane. It is the dumbest philosophy. It, that is the equivalent of a football team is saying, you know what? That, it's like Tennessee and Alabama playing. Tennessee saying, we're stopping Alabama by going after their kicker. Oh, we are going to stop their kicker. You know, it's, it's interesting because there are Venezuelans now on record on X and other social media saying this is exactly exactly what the socialist candidate, the guy that's running that country right now said when he took office, that he was going to put price fixes on everything. And the exact opposite happened. There were people, well, I mean, you think about it, you're, you're producing a product, right? You're a business and somewhat, some entity says, no, all you can charge is this. Well, my expenses are this. Right. Doesn't matter. Well, are you going to continue to produce that product or are you going to shut your doors and and then there's going to be a scarcity of the product that you provide because more and more companies like yours are going to be out of business. It's, it's simpler logic, which fails to escape her. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like when, when we were attacking dr the drug industry. Okay. And one of the, one of the higher ups was like, why are we going after people that are the end user? Like, why are we arresting, you know, the people that are on the drugs no. we need to go to the source where it's coming from? The source is fuel. Everything begins with fuel. Whether you like it or not, whether you want your electric car or not, everything runs off of fuel. And the first phase of that is the trucking industry. And I don't just say that because I'm in it. I see it because I see it. Mm -hmm. It begins with freight. And if freight costs go up because fuel goes up and fuel surcharges go up, everything along the line. It isn't just groceries. Why are you attacking just grocers? It's furniture. It's, it's retail. It's gym membership it's everything across the board and it all begins at the bottom with the simple basis of fuel if you drop fuel back down to where we're only paying under two dollars i guarantee you the economy is going to raise right back up and people will start buying it i'm telling you it is my theory what's going on right now number one the media the msnbc cnn cabal they've always hated trump and they couldn't get excited behind Biden. They couldn't, they're all the people behind Biden. The, the Kamala, this whole thing about free land and all this other BS that they're talking about right now, it's 100% the gin up their base. That base was checked out. They were done. Nuggets, 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 yeah, nuggets, yeah. nuggets. The people who are going to vote against Kamala haven't changed at all. I did talk to one guy on the phone the other day. I was selling him, trying to sell him a coin. And man, it's so hard when you're talking to stupidity, but this guy was from Vermont and, you know, he was, he was moaning about, uh, Trump mostly. And I think I'm a, I'm a vet and a whole thing about Waltz being making up, all, you know, making up his, I think there's some story about his veteran status and yeah, and, and we'll look into that as much, but it, this guy was like, it, it would just turn sour and sour the longer I talked to him. I'm just. I'm going for command. I'm like, do you know much about it? Doesn't even know the it's Trump that I don't want as president. I'm like, right. No, okay. Right. Yeah. So you, so reality is you have no clue what's going on. You just are voting against someone that you don't like.
That's exactly what you find. You, you say to somebody who says that they're going to vote for her, say, all right, give me five reasons why <laughs> without mentioning the word Trump. And they, they cannot, or like I, I seen somebody that was interviewed people at the DNC and they're like, yeah, we're voting for Kamala. And like, oh, that's fantastic. What's your favorite thing that she's done over the last four years? Like a positive question, mm -hmm. right? Uh, coming at him, not attack. What's your favorite thing? And it's, I, I don't know. I just, I just really like her. I feel she's doing what's best for the country. Okay. What, what, what she's for joy and hope, Bray? Joy and hope. She's for alcoholism what? is what she is. Well, that's another thing. So, okay. Let's talk about how one sided the media is just for fun. Cause it, cause they really are. All right. So Trent uh, was prosecuted before the 2016 election because him and this guy named Lopez, I guess so that was a, one of these, uh, uh, they, they do the celebrity, you know, 30, 40 minute show. And that Mario, I think it was Mario Lopez or someone it was right before the election and Trump had said something about grabbing their, you know, never regions for, yeah. Now did Trump do that? Probably. You might have said it. Yeah, he could have often in a, in, in a conversation with someone. Was he guilty of being a rural man in the 80s, to be honest, uh, with the way we talked and the way we communicated and sometimes the way some people acted, what we consider sexual assault abuse now isn't necessarily what they considered it back then. But that aside, you know, disgusting behavior or not, everybody, everybody had that's lived through that decade, those decades. I mean, there's some saints among us, but there are, there are quite a few, if everybody had their background sifted through like Trump did, you're going to find things. Now, Kamala is very famous for one way she got to the top. And boy, if you, if you mention that the women you're at irate, it's like, how dare you? How dare you? And the reality the is, thing, Carl, yeah, Google that. Like, the minute she took Canada, see, his giggle swept all the negative stories off. I know. How does that? How, how, did, how does the media claim they're impartial and unbiased and sit there and not put her through the same filtering and the same examination? And, and she just barely got put in that position to run against Trump. This is so undemocratic. It's almost like, you know, some are on the right side. I'm calling it a coup, and in a way, I mean, have you heard anything from Biden since then? No. Well, the, the DNC, he spoke like jibber jabbered some bullshit out. Well, even if she's not running the country, so who the hell is running the country? Yeah, exactly. I've Seriously, I haven't heard any any political like moves or anything like that that's been going on. It's it's almost like nobody's behind the wheel. No, we've got we've got aircraft carriers going to Israel. It's like Blinken's running the country right now, the Secretary of State, and then we've got uh, American mercenaries caught in Kursk by Russians. We've got Russia now threatening Ukraine with tactical strategic nukes, and this time it's not just you know this is getting a little hot. In the, and, and everybody's just acting like everything's just fine here in this country. You know, we've got Kamala because she's got joy and hope going for it. And this is what people don't realize. And Kennedy brought this up on a podcast recently. If we were to be attacked today by Japan, by Russia, by whoever, it would not be very good for the United States. We have no onshore manufacturing of military components at all. None of it. Wow. Wow. So once our missiles, once everything is gone, we don't have any way to repopulate that. That is very frightening. We do not have a way as a country to defend our own people. Well, we better hope Zelensky will give us some of our arms back because uh, we might need them. It's all invested in his wife's breath is what it is. Jeez, it's a, it's a mess. I, I wonder what Zelensky's quality is once they collapse and Russians roll into their head. Their, what was it Kiev? Is that how they pronounce it? I mean, it's, it's just a matter of time, and that's what's scary to me. The one that's really worried me, and you don't hear anything from the Democrats on this, which doesn't surprise me because I don't think most of them even understand the concept, but there's a, there's a group now that are trying to get petroleum producers off the U.S. dollar. It's called BRICS, B-I-I-C-S, and China, Russia, 
Saudi Arabia and oh, Iran oh, and oh. yeah, a bunch of other countries. On, and they're assigning other countries around the world one by one quickly to this consortium. So what they're going to do is it's backed up gold and silver and those legit, and they are going to destroy the U.S. dollar. Which is plummet. No one listening to this podcast and most of the people listening to our podcast are very educated. I don't even think you guys understand the reality of what's going to happen here in this country. It's going to turn us into a pseudo second class. I wouldn't call us a third world country at that point, but there are parts of the United States right now that are third world. But we are going to go through a severe economic crisis, which none of us are prepared for. Well, this whole thing, and it's not just doom and gloom. This is, this is reality. I mean, yeah, you can go buy your house, but I mean, are you going to have a job to pay for that mortgage in five years? You let the Democrats run this place another three years. That's exactly what's going to happen. Most of us are employed and it's going to be a shit show. Sorry. See that, you know, those job numbers came out for like, I think it was March where they lied about him and it was actually a mm -hmm. loss of jobs by over 800,000. Yeah. That's a little off. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't have passed my mouth if I was 800,000 off on my test. <laughs> Are you, I'm, I'm ace because I, I doubt she's going to ask any questions until this point, but when this debate happens and I don't know how the Democrats are going to allow this to happen, you know, she'll probably have one of these in, probably one on each side telling her exactly what to say, but like she was solid time, baby. Let me tell us. Absolutely going to get annihilated. Well, is it going to be Caesar salad or the full pecan? I mean, you know what? She's not going to make any sense. She's yeah. going to sound. I mean, she's going to, you know what she's going to do? She's going to bait. Well, they're going to bait Trump to make her, make him look mean. I think that's really because she's, she's pandering to the lowest common denominator voter. I mean, I'll be honest. I know people, as soon as she was announced, they're like, well, you know, I think I'm going to vote for her though, because she's a woman and, and she's, she's a woman. wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. And she's not I Trump. Thought, I thought the Democrats didn't want to label, have a label as a woman. Oh, but that's all about labels. Democrats have always been about the labels. I thought that that isn't, that there is no women there. Um, I, I thought that was part of it. <laughs> well, you know, here's, and, and to get, bring this back to a positive line of, 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 you know, positive in this uh, conversation we're having today. Here's, here's one of the things that I like about what's going on with K. Trump's actually reached out to RFK and has asked him to be a part of his future administration. We'll see Goddard. He was a Democrat running against Kamala in the 2016 and 20, or was it 2020? I can't remember which one, but she is now pro Trump. Well, didn't even on just the other day. Said, I, I would be. He's going to put out. He's talking about making a search engine to compete against Google that will be an unbiased search engine. I mean, these are three Democrats. Yeah, very much. I mean, three. Elon, Elon is electric cars. I mean, he's like right in the Democrat well, line. You no. Know? Well, and JD Vance was is was selected primarily because he shuts up some of the real hard, hardcore Romney Republicans. Well, some of them, and who knows if they even show up in the, and vote anyway, uh, for all I care, the Romney Republicans go to shove it. So now, now you've got still some neocons left, uh, con and who's that guy from South Carolina? I can't stand always wants us in every war. I, I can't, I, not Graham, but, uh, um, yeah, it is. It's is it Grant? Okay. Yeah. That turkey needs to get voted out. But the reality is we still have some, some people on the right in the center are, you know, leaning that are mainline. But here's the difference too. But is this really in the Republican party now? And what, but what he's doing he? is he's not looking at party affiliations. He's looking at right. the best person for the job, which is this the way is... it should be in the cabinet. You don't, you put people in who have an understanding of what you're putting them in education. Have somebody with an education background, transportation, somebody with a transportation really? background. What Biden did was he put people in position based off of who they fuck. That's the only <laughs> reason why. And I hate to be or not. Yes, but, but that, that's the only reason why. 
And yeah. you, you have put well, and look at what's happened in the transportation industry over the last four years. When you look at what Butlick has done, we have never had so many train derailments in a four-year period, ever in the history of our country. It has been terrible. Our flight industry is terrible, suffering. He is failing on every avenue. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Well, I mean, one of the thoughts I had was when this country was first formulated, the founding fathers, I, there's no two party system in the constitution I've ever read about. Okay. And, and, and the reality is I think Washington and some of the others, the only reason they went along with it, which they shouldn't have. Now, when you think back about it, they should have said, no, we're not doing it. It's purely a process where, you know, the best person should win. And then like what you were saying, Trump's putting together the best of our world right now that could, you know, help him America. Fine. Help our country. Yes. That's help America. About. Yes. No, that's the point. Help America first. If we help America first, the rest of the world will come along and we can help the rest of the world. But we keep ignoring America and continue to worry about everything else that's not important. We're not going to have an America to worry about. And that's why I think. George Washington and, and those guys back then, they should have banned political parties, and, you know, cause now look at the mess we've created. Um, we seem to think that we have to have two parties. We have to have a Republican and a Democrat and, and, and that cannot be any exceptions, but you know, Trump mainly break the mold. I think with this second administration, it, he's almost more of a populist candidate or a people's candidate. And not a Republican this time, which is interesting because, I mean, definitely in 2016, I think the reason his first term wasn't successful, even though he'd had a lot of successes, was because he pandered too much to this whole, I got to be a Republican. I got to make right. Mitch happy. I got to make some of these Republicans happy. No, you don't. Just be well, what the people want. And that's what he's doing. And, and I think we needed something like a Biden administration to really show the American people. Oh yeah. We've got to wake up. Like we've got to get out of this type of mix. So let me ask you a question then, because I, look, I'm not telling people to vote for Trump. I am telling people not to vote for Harris. And I think it's safe to say that until a couple of days ago, you and I were both leaning towards Kennedy as that other candidate. Oh yeah. yeah so, I was thinking about it. With. Kennedy not in it any longer. For those who do not like Trump, what other direction do we have? What other type of candidate do we have? You really don't have much of an option now because I think all the independents are called call call coalescing towards Trump because of this whole populist message that he is not beholden to the Republican party. In fact, if you're an old guard type Republican, you're going to be on the outs with this guy. That's why you see DeSantis being real quiet. And, and I like DeSantis. I think he eventually should be a candidate. I don't I, think, I so. think. I think we saw during these last debates. I don't think I like. He tore me apart in a private, I know, in a separate debate. He, yes, but. He how does he run against thing. Trump? How do you run against that guy? He's a, he's a freaking tidal wave. But, but what, what Trump, okay. What Trump was in 2016 was brash, arrogant, right in your face. What do you right. do today? He, he still has that, but he's toned it down and he's become more, you know, they showed him with his family. They, sh they showed a softer side of, of Trump. And with DeSantis, I agree with his politics. I don't like his personality, though. Well, he needs, he needs to work on he's, that. He's just, well, you yeah, know, he's kind of boring. Yeah, you know? no, no, I, I hear you. I like think pants. he's like, pants. yeah. Well, here's, here's a question I have, and this is, you brought up personality with Trump before he was almost assassinated. People real, I mean, I, I really didn't like him. He still, I felt when I listened to some of his speeches, hadn't got it yet. Then after I was listening to the RNC, his, his speech, he seems like he had a come to Jesus moment and realized that he could be likable. Now, some people think, oh, he sounds like an old fuddy daddy. No, he doesn't. He's just, that's just the way he talks. I think that's the way he's around his family. And he had to have this tough exterior because of the shots that his family and he were taking. 
And now he's like, you know what? Yeah, you guys don't. I, I really could care less what you think of me because there's a whole purpose here. And this is what I'm trying to do is serve the purpose and save our country. And that's, that's really what this election is coming to. Do you, do you want to continue to just dwindle into obscurity as a country and be, I mean, get, I guess have your ego fed if you're a low info voter. I mean, oh yeah, it's all rich people's fault. We won't do anything about it. We all could be just happy and lovey if we get get that evil guy Trump. Vote for me. I'll give you free everything, and and then wake up, you know, six months later and go, what the hell? I'm in a lot of trouble. Why? Why do I have? Why? Why? Why is a gallon of milk cost ten dollars now? Yeah, <laughs> and you know, during that Republic convention. And, and other, other conventions have had this, they've had families come out, but I think for whatever reason, and they did a really good, you know, having his granddaughter come out like that, you know, oh, yeah. it was, it was beautiful. really having yeah. the grandkids come across and the camera come across and the one shits on his lap and, you know, he's talking to him and hugging him. That was real. that the Democrats tried to do that and it failed drastically. It was incredibly boring what they tried to do. The, the other thing is, is day one of the Democratic, of the DNC, they announced, they said the word Trump 149 times. Why did they just name it the Trump night? Yes. Just call it Trump night. I mean, during the whole Republic, they mentioned Biden four times. And, and RFK, him. and they don't even have to say that. RFK, Judith, don't, don't. say it. You don't. Have, and so you, all you have to do is point once around. When, when that debate with Trump and Biden was going on, everything, every question was, you have failed at this. You have, what are you going to do? You have failed at this. What are you going to do? You have failed at this. And then we've got Harris's people saying, Hey, we're going to continue where we're going. Things are fantastic. And then what does she say? Day one, we're going to make a change. You're on three and a half years in. Why are you making, why change? haven't you made changes so far? And the people that are telling you what to say and think every two seconds, come on with, are they going to really let you do all this stuff that you're claiming you're going to do? The hell no. It's, it's all let's based on you and I are together. And, and I'm like, Hey, Carl, are, are you hungry? You're like, no, I'm not really hungry. And then I pull out like a Hershey kiss from my pocket. I'm like, Hey, you want this? You're like, Oh my God. Yes. I want a Hershey kiss. That's what these little, uh, well, yeah, really nuggets. Like uh, we're paying your student loans off. Oh, yes. Oh, look, you know. Well, Biden that. tried that. It failed miserably. So, you know, they didn't work out with the Supreme Court. Thank goodness the Supreme Court is still conservative. I mean, kind of. I mean, you, just that. It's just, you can't do that. The money comes from somewhere. It yeah. doesn't just get wiped away and nothing happens. If you are a company that loans money to students, that's your business. Somebody can't come in and say, you need to wipe that clean. Well, that's not the way the economy works. That's not the way capital, the society no. works. Yeah, I, well, I seem to think so. I, they think we're stupid enough to, to continue to believe it. And a lot of people are, I mean, here's, here's where it comes down to the, the demographics haven't changed that much. The election is going to be tight. Uh, I think though, that Trump's going to do a lot better than he did in 2020 and you know, he thinks he did really good in 2020 and maybe he did. I mean, he claims that there was a lot of fraud, which was never really proven. I mean, I'll it give it from the state of Georgia. They're actually arresting yeah. that. Okay. So, in Georgia. But the part, the hard part is proving it though. And like, uh, well, in Arizona is kind of interesting. They just passed that the, the, the Supreme court in Arizona said that they do are allowed because the legislature in Arizona overruled the the libs in maricopa county and basically said we need vote id and they Why have to have it? yeah and they have to have voter id or they can't vote democrats are fighting that tooth and nail especially with with illegals and the government yeah. uh, the, the republicans won this battle and now the question is you know the democrats say well you can't prove any type of fraud in arizona like well wait a minute there were forty thousand illegal votes uh, from illegals that got counted in that if you took those out, the, the difference was like a thousand. I mean, yeah. Trump would have won. So, so Arizona would have gone to Trump. Georgia, as you say, would have gone to Trump, even if he lost Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, which is still, dude, I was, I was up that night. It was one in the morning, central time. I was at midnight here in Utah. 
Well, and Trump was ahead big time in Wisconsin. And from nowhere, in one hour, flipped almost 90,000 votes went to Trump. I mean, Biden. Almost every single one of them that were counted went to Biden. Statistically, how is that possible? It isn't. Yeah, you see, so it is. I, I, I just, and then Pennsylvania and the whole thing with their yeah. software and what happened. And I mean, okay, yeah. we, you can, I mean, I guess you can make an argument that maybe we're reaching a little bit on Pennsylvania. The reality was damn close. And that's even with, with the county going completely with Biden. So I think, I think this election again is going to be close. I think Trump will actually draw more votes from some of the blue states that normally he doesn't. And even though it won't help him in the electoral college, it's going to help him in the general vote. I think the general vote is going to be damn close or Trump's going to win it. And, and I think it's because of the consensus he's creating. Um, I mean, we don't see anything. It'll be interesting to see what happens on that debate. It's what, two weeks, right? It's getting close. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. Probably right. There, we're not going to yeah. have any more debates after that. No, there's three. Oh, is there three now? I missed that. Okay. There's, there's two presidential and there's one vice presidential. So we're going to see JD Vance against Tampon Tim. Oh, J- JD is going to destroy him. JD's smart. He's an intelligent guy. Yeah, I don't, is. Wallace has never and, impressed me. And you're going to put a guy who has a proven track military record. I guess against a guy that's a freak. Yeah. And let me explain what happened. He, he left before they were deployed. His own unit, which you talk to any military man, that is a no-no. That, that is, that is a disgraceable action on what he did. He's going to harp on it. And he continues, Camp on Tim continues to talk Camp about how he had a gun and was serving. He didn't. Not one thing. Yeah. Yeah. He did not. And the Dems were like, oh, well, what's the big deal? You shouldn't cut his military record. Well, it's not me or you that's cutting it. It is actual military people who have been in combat, who have yeah. served under leaders, who served them under combat. They're the ones that are furious absolutely furious to take that and push it on you as an agenda is a flat out ridiculous lie and it's it's it's, that is a disgrace to our military veterans who have served in combat oh i agree i agree well we'll see what happens speaking of military veterans my son he's been gone seven and a half years he's coming back this next week wednesday wow yeah, so we're playing some fun things this next weekend for him. And seven and a half years, staff sergeant. He was in the Airborne Division, served in Pensacola. Not a tough place, but also served in Stuttgart. Stuttgart, Stuttgart or Stuttgart, you know. So that will be fun to have him back. So, so um, oh, we got a neighborhood talk. Yeah, anything new? Well, nothing new, but you know, I I kind of wanted to. uh I don't know, because a lot of the uh, neighborhood people that I talked to when I was visiting and stuff, they, they said they had enjoyed hearing a lot of the memories and, and stuff like that that went along, you know, across the mem- you know, across our neighborhood and stuff. And I took a drive through there. Yeah, back that's there. so different when you get older. My old house, they actually took the grass out completely in the front and put artificial turf in. Ooh, that's terrible. Okay. I mean, it's less expensive, you know, but. Yeah, but it looks horrible. I think I've seen it. It's, it's, it's okay. Bad. It looks. Maybe they need to make so, the house a different color, but the turf doesn't look good now with the color of the house. I, anyway. I've noticed a lot more of the desert landscape for yards yeah. there than I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know though. This, this year has been a lot of rain. Like the last month we've had torrential rain several once or twice a week. So bring it here. We need it. Yeah. But I can be here. It's been crazy, but yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the how I think the neighborhood's a little more run down and some, some people take really good care of their homes and then some people don't, you know, it's just reality anywhere you live. So I think it was always like that though. I think, I think so. You're living there, stuff. You're around all the time. I don't think you notice it as much, but when you're away from it and then you step back into it, you're like, oh, this is. Well, you got to realize too, a lot of those homes, at least in the neighborhood I lived in, were brand new. And then you had also those homes. Were, area. 
the <laughs> Unilever chairs. Well, and and the, and the areas where you guys lived, weren't they around since the 60s? I mean, they were just built. 1963 is when my parents moved in. It was called Sundown. Sundown, huh? Yeah, that was the name of that community was Sundown. And that they built those through the 60s and then into the 70s as they branched further down or up, I guess, northward. Um, you know, oh, yeah. Hill and stuff. Oh, interesting. I didn't know it's called Sundown. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. And then, uh, yeah, as far as um, news about other people, I'll, I've talked to, Sh I mean, the update with Sean, Sean's been in Utah a couple of times. His, he and Alan are, are trying to help his family, his, his mom and dad. And so anyway, I had, I had a good long conversation with Sean the other day about that subject. And it's one that our age group is going to be struggling with, and we'll probably have a, a podcast that we talk specifically about that for the whole, whole episode, but that was happening now. Our parents, I mean, you've already kind of gone through this already. Your mom is, uh, she, she's over 90, right? And, uh, three, she's four next month. And it really does come down to the question, when is the right time to move into a retirement home and what's the proper way our generation should handle that. How do you talk to your parents and how do you convince them that now's the time to, how are they financially in a position to do it? I mean, there's a lot of factors involved or should you take the primary role and help them in their later years? And so, I mean, it'd be fascinating to get, you know, some perspective from some of our listeners who are dealing with that. Please reach out to us and. We'd like to kind of hear, you know, your feedback, what, what works and what doesn't. And if one of you feels strongly, about it, we'd love you to be a third, you know, the third dad bod. You don't have to yeah. be male either these days. You can, you can be a confused about your gender. So we'll, we'll take anybody. On any of your note. So, and, 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 and what kind of brought, you know, talking about the neighborhood again. So last yeah. time my wife and I were out, we're driving and, uh, Jason Mraz, I don't know if you like Jason Mraz at all, but like he was next to you. His songs are always feel good. Yeah, his songs are kind of hot and candy, but yeah, anyway. They're good. They're good. So like on one of his live al albums, he does the rendition of All Night Long from Lionel Richie. Oh, and, yeah. and I was listening to that last night with my wife, and I suddenly had a flashback of what we call our, our outside of Utah neighborhood listeners. We call it the steakhouse. It's not where you go and eat steak. Up here, Carl. Away from your phone. I sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, I was just um, important, so I didn't make sure. There you go. Um, but it's an area where we, as, as kids spent a lot of time with dances, with athletic, we had a lot of time that was spent at this, what we call steakhouse and listening to that song reminded me of a church dance that was going on at the same time that Lionel Richie was in town. And yeah, like it just brought that little flashback in my head, but I got to remembering Keep thinking of, of closing my eyes and remembering that feeling of early Saturday morning, getting up, putting on the uniform, going down to the steakhouse, entering in those double doors and going into that gym, which was, that was our time. And it always had a smell. There was yeah. always a smell. But, but it was just that, that feeling of, of being on that court. And to us. It may as well be the Forum or Boston Garden or, or the Salt Palace or wherever, because it's our bullet by four to five foot release area. We together. Yeah. And we, we battled and we fought. And just, I can always just remember just walking in those double doors, looking to the right up there with the little scoreboard that was right up there. Walking around over to the stage, putting on the shoes, got the uni on, you know, representing our little nick of a neighborhood. It was a lot of fun. Speaking of basketball gyms, and this is a subject you and I can relate to. Well, I was growing up, I played in a lot of basketball gyms in the Utah area. Speaking of smells, the old gyms were the best because you would walk in and, he, and there was just this distinct odor. And it wasn't a negative odor. I mean, well, most of the time, General. it was, I don't know if it was the wood. I don't know if it was the court itself or the basketballs because they get all really it greasy. I mean, it, it must be a combination everything. of everything. Cause, cause the church that I lived across the street from, 
I mean, he was well, he smoked carpet and he got nice carpet bags a lot of times. Man, ever. Or rolled ankles or anything else. <laughs> but man, that smell. So if I say Cypress Gym, what is the first thought you think of? Well, I have a different thought than you probably have. Well, you played I, on that court a lot. Yeah, I, I don't think of a smell. I, I think of an atmosphere. Okay. And, and I think of, of the two ends that had bleachers. And, and I think of, in the fourth quarter, guys that were in their 40s and 30s showing up from the from the copper mine wearing their old Letterman jackets were there to fight. Like, it, it was a hostile environment. Well, and the, the other thing that I liked about the Cypress gym is you had those big wood bleachers on both sides that would pull yeah, out. out. Yeah. When it was high, so the crowd was way above you. And then, of course, it would pull out to the court, right? Yeah. When I went to school at Skyline, it was one of these modern building, like the roof was way up there and it was yeah. cavernous well, and bolted. Yeah. It, it was right. like, like waves almost. Oh, yeah. And I don't know what they're doing on the remodel, but remodeling it. But the, but the, the bleachers, yeah, the bleachers were always the same size, you know? Yeah. And I mean, you could put a lot of people in, but I like those old gyms. There was one when we were playing in the church area up in, I think it was holiday. It was this big old wood arena that was next to a church. It was weird. It was a, it was a uh, basketball court for a church court and uh, same thing just those old-fashioned gyms I, I, they're really i actually love them i don't know how many are left in utah now but uh, do you see those out in tennessee at all ever you ever come across them anymore there's no man systems out here no i mean i mean like wood gyms like cypress or what i don't know i mean there's one that's at the community center down here that, that i'll go and play every once in a while but yeah it's not this, and I don't even know if youth sports there in Utah is the same as like we were with, with kids because oh, you know. came in, but like church basketball took precedent over stuff like that. Here at the local high school, Pleasant Grove, they call it the Valhalla Hall or the pit. You walk in and it looks like a junior college. I mean, they put millions of dollars in this thing and it, it, it looks like just a moony modern college super for you know and right, you're just right. like whoa i mean this this is nothing like what we played on now it's cool don't get me wrong i no, mean i would like, love to play still on church athletics though is, is that does that still go on uh, not not really not like it used to i mean they still yeah. have some of the stakes will do stuff but the area stuff's gone the region stuff's gone you know they 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 knock down the desert gym which is sad uh, for that big now mega dome LDS conference center, which is pretty quick as far as the design and walking through it. But I wish they would have moved it because the desert gym, that was, that was a, that was a solid place to go it hang was. out downtown. And two places growing the two best places where I would play against the best competition, no matter what age I was. Desert gym. Was at the desert gym and at the state pen. I had nothing but in the state pen, bro. I, I, we did. <laughs> we, we went in, we used to go every other week. I can't remember who it was. Is that where you got your tattoo? Uh, 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 drop. Yeah. No, we had a friend that was a guard at the state pen. And so a bunch of us would go down every other weekend and play basketball down there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've never seen people who could shoot. This was Steph Curry before Steph Curry. And oh, I am. doing that sure. way before. Or it was one place better than Desert Gym was actually on my mission. I decided to bow off to the Saturday session of general conference with my companion that we were supposed to be at the Can you say that the main be next yeah. communicated as a mission? No, no, we were we were well, we went down to what's called South Street in Philly and we have some public courts and they play winners all day long. And then it was a beautiful spring morning and the temperature was perfect. We got this this white boy from Princeton who played for the Princeton the basketball team. So myself, my whitest snow companion and two other guys that were white. So five of us all in me, we played the next two and a half hours straight on that court because we kept winning. And I mean, it was funny because, because the afternoon records we were playing, we were like rubbing each other, like, what? white boys kicking ass, you know, and it, and, and it got really kind of, and then, simple. 
couple individuals that got a little upset at us and we finally lost, but I uh, mean, that was some of the funnest. That was some of the most fun basketball I've ever played. I mean, it was my companion. We would throw gym because in Philly, it's awesome. You, you go down the street, go around the corner and you see eight or nine guys playing basketball. And so on the middle of a Wednesday afternoon. So what we would do is we'd just pull our high tops out of our backpacks where we had our book of Mormons and then we would throw them on our suits, you know, well, in our, 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 our business pants and white shirts. And we'd play for an hour, get real sweaty, and then hand them book of Mormons if we won and uh, tell them that they had to listen to a discussion, which none of them ever did. But, uh, it was fun. It was Billy, Billy knows how to play it. They call it the, they know how to throw and kill on the. Well, good podcast, bud. Good to see you again and then yeah. talk to our listener again. And Hopefully that was a good mix today between political and old memories. So we, we hope you enjoy the podcast, even though it's going to be probably when we want to do it. Sounds good, buddy. Great enjoy. talking to you and welcome. Yep. To you. We'll see you guys again. Thanks for watching Three Dad Pods. New episodes are released every Wednesday evening. Look for us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. Have a totally awesome weekend, everyone, and see you next week.